Is it sinful to use preferred pronouns? Someone asked me that question in church the other day, and it's not the first time I've been asked that question. Um, We live obviously in a culture where many things have changed when it comes to to sex and gender, our orientation and self-identification. And so preferred pronouns seem to be becoming the norm in a lot of the business world, in a lot of uh, companies, um, a lot of school and classroom situations. And, And so someone asked this really important question, is it sinful to use preferred pronouns? Now, I, I got to say, I try to keep these videos to just a few minutes, and, and this is one of those questions that feels uh, unfair to try to keep it short. So if I can ask for your attention for just a little bit longer, um, because there are so many layers to this question. I mean, first we have to start with the idea of, of gender itself. Like, where does gender come from? Who decides if we're male or female? Is that a, a biological physical thing, the body we're created with, or is that something separate from gender, just how we feel about ourselves? We'd have to answer that question. We have to figure out what the Bible says about that before we can say, is it sinful to use a preferred pronoun? And and then we have to tackle the question, well, what do, what do we do if we go out into a world and there's all kinds of people doing all kinds of things that may or may not line up with the Bible? How do we address that? I mean, do you just go around just telling everyone the chapter and the verse for everything to confront things from the start? Or is there a little bit of wisdom in being patient and establishing relationships before you tackle some of the tougher truths of the Bible? I mean, this question might seem so simple. Is it sinful? Should I use someone's preferred pronouns? Or if I think that's not right, should I not? Um, To me, it's actually very complicated. It's kind of like getting an invitation to a gay friend's wedding. Do you go or not? It might seem like a simple question, but there's actually tons of layers to that. Like, well, what does the Bible say about sexuality? Do you have a, a really clear answer on that? And and then once we do, how do we how do we decide whether this is the time to you know be bold with the truth or uh, to patiently love someone and, and deepen a relationship? Um, <laughs> It, you might call me a, a coward for saying this. I'm, I'm going to give you some answers here in just a second. But preferred pronouns, attending weddings like that, these are issues where I, I really think that Christians who love the truth of the Bible and love the love of Jesus might end up in different places. It says in the Gospel of John, speaking of Jesus, that he came from the Father. This is John 1 verse 14. He came from the Father full of grace and truth. He was full of, of grace. There was more love and compassion and patience in Jesus. It was shocking the way he treated people, how tender he often was with them. He wasn't just bold and blunt and dropping truth bombs. He was full of grace. And the Bible says he was full of truth. Um, he would tell you the way that it was. He, he wasn't a coward. He wasn't just trying to please people. He was full of grace and truth. And so when I think of really complicated questions of gender identity, uh, usage of pronouns, homosexuality, uh, attending gay weddings, I'm always thinking of that of that goal to be like Jesus, full of grace and truth. So um, let's tackle the question as best we can. Um, let's talk about gender real quick. Um, today, it seems like there is a real distinction between your biological sex and then how you identify. I think that's where pronouns come from. I might have a male body uh, or, or genetics that are this way, but if I, I feel like a woman, then maybe I'm going to use a she and her pronoun. You know, I, I kind of get to pick what that is, even though I didn't get to pick what kind of body I have. Now, the question is, is that a biblical thing to do? Um, it's an emotional question to answer because I've ministered to and loved people who've struggled with gender dysphoria. Uh, that's the fancy term for feeling like you're trapped in the wrong body. I've I've heard people say just how emotionally distressing it is to feel like you're stuck, uh, to feel just uncomfortable in your own skin. I remember one man said, uh, Pastor, I feel about my body the way you feel when you get caught in a rainstorm and you're soaked and you have like a t-shirt that's just stuck to you and the first thing you want to do is just just get it off. It's so uncomfortable. That's how I feel about this male body that I'm in. And I've had a couple of conversations like that just make me think, wow, um, this must be so difficult to not feel at home in your own body. And if you've known someone or done the research, you might know that the rates of self-harm 
and attempted suicide and completed suicide are, are sky high for people who struggle with gender dysphoria. So as we grab a Bible and answer this question, please, please be full of grace. Whether this is you or your sister, your son, your best friend, a coworker, those people have likely gone through more emotional distress than people like me can probably comprehend. So back to the truth. Is gender something set by God in a biological body or is it something that we uh, kind of sense and feel and reveal to the world? Well, I would go to the very first page of the Bible to answer that question where God creates Adam and Eve and we find these really interesting words. It says in Genesis 1 verse 27, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God created them male and female. When he made them, it seems like God is the subject of this verb. He is the one who is deciding whether a person is male or female. And then, very next verse, get this. It says, God blessed them, the male and the female, and God said to them, the male and the female, be fruitful and increase in number. Now, obviously, to be fruitful, um, to be sexually active and increase in number requires um, not a, a sense of self or a feeling, but a biological reality that we call sperm and egg. And so I believe here on the very first page of the Bible, we find something that's consistent through all of the Bible, that male and female is something that's given to you by God. It's a, a physical, objective thing connected to procreation, uh, to genetics. In, in fact, just notice that, that the word gender, G-E-N, is connected to other words like genetics, the objective way that God made you, or genitals, the body and the parts that God gave you, your ability to regenerate a new generation of children who are sometimes called progeny. Right? So uh, genetics isn't just a, a feeling or a sense of self or something psychological. It's something very physical. And we find that on the very first page of the Bible. So uh, do I think it's okay to transition your gender? Uh, my short answer is I, I, I don't. Um, hopefully I say that with compassion, as I tried to point out before. Um, is it okay to pick whatever pronouns and a new name that you want? I, I would say no. Because your gender doesn't come from within you. It, it was given to you by God. God created them. Male and female, he created them. Which brings us finally, I think you're sticking with me, to the question, okay, so if there's someone in my family or at my job or at my school who doesn't believe that, if they've transit, if they're using different pronouns, what should I do? Should I grab a Bible and open to Genesis chapter one? Um, if I don't believe that's right or even true, am I participating in something that's not true? If I use that pronoun, this, <laughs> can I get back to where I started? This is a tough question. Um, I can see a Christian being conscious bound saying, uh, that's just not right. I don't believe that's true. How could I speak that if it's not like certain and true and biblically accurate? I, I just can't do that. I, I can see why a Christian would say that. And they try to be kind and patient and show their love in another way, but they would have to say, I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't call you by that name. And you might think that's hatred or a microaggression or I'm uh, dead naming you. Sometimes people use that phrase, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to recognize that God himself gave you a body. I want to recognize the God who created you. And, and I could see a, a Christian who might say, you know what, if I come on that strong, that fast, this conversation is done and this relationship is, is over. That's such a sensitive, hot button issue. Many people think it's their very identity, their sexuality and gender. That if I'm not patient, if I don't meet a person where they're at, they're never going to get to Genesis chapter 1 or the Jesus who convinces me that this book is absolutely true. So, man, you, you can share maybe in the comment section how you have approached this issue and what's happened afterwards. Uh, I'm curious of how you approach it, what Bible passages shape your approach, and what successes maybe you've seen in the approach that you've taken. Um, I do know this. I trust the Bible. I believe that as tough as it can be to follow his word, um, we should embrace our created bodies, look to Jesus for forgiveness and strength, to treat our neighbor with love, and as best we can, as John 1.14 says, to be like Jesus, full 
of grace and truth? I'm humbled by this question. I'm begging God for wisdom as I face this in my own life. And I pray that you can pray that same prayer to him too. May God bless us as we be Christ-like, full of grace and truth.